Hello and welcome. Today we're working on a practice exam one, the very first one in principles of accounting or financial accounting. So let's get started. My name is Jeff from Finally Learn. We're teaching right now chapter one, like introduction to accounting, so terms and accounting equation kind of things, and the accounts. And then also we're recording business transactions in chapter two. So let's get started. Here what I have is a practice exam. It's, it's a version of an exam that I've given in previous years. So I just try to provide it to help you learn. So here we have some short answer and then we'll go into a short little problem. And then the next video is journal entries. And the third video is how to do a little income statement. So journal entries here. And then what if you're given uh, a trial balance and then can you do a financial statements based on that? All right, so let's get started with our short answer. So the first question is, if equity is 75,000 and liabilities are 20,000, what are total assets? Well, this is testing the accounting equation. And you remember the accounting equation is assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. So you could ask, you know, your professor could ask or on a test, you could say, what is the accounting equation? Well, that's memory work, assets equals liabilities plus equity. But if you do it in a problem like this, this tests that you know the formula, but also that you understand you know, how the math works. So what you need to do is set up an assets and then liabilities and then equity. And so plug in what you know, solve for what you don't know. If equity is 75,000 and liabilities are 20,000, then this little format helps you see, well, we must take assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. So we're going to take the 20,000 plus the 75, and it looks like assets are 95,000. So our answer is assets are 95,000. Okay, let's keep going. If beginning retained earnings is 4,400, ending retained earnings is 5,200, Dividends are 2,800. What is net income or net loss? Well, one thing we know is how to calculate ending retained earnings. So beginning is 4,400, 4,400. The ending is 5,200. Dividends are 2,800. So what is our net income? Well, now, normally what we would do if we're given this information we would take beginning plus net income minus dividends, and we'd end up with our ending number. So what we need to do is work backwards. We need to take the 5,200, and we're going to add the dividends because that's a negative calculation. We do the opposite, and we're going to subtract the 4,400. So what we have is we have net income is going to be 3,600. So our net income, if we take 4,400 plus 3,600, that ends up being 8,000 minus 2,800 gives us ending retained earnings of 5,200. So we're going to use this format every time we have a problem like this. In fact, our next one has a problem very similar. We have some different information that we want to put. So what we need to do is just use this format every time and we'll solve with new numbers. All right, delete those. Beginning retained earnings is 400. Dividends are 1,000. Um, cash is 700. Do we need this at all? Do we need cash? No, we don't. That's a extra information. One of the things you have to do, what information do you need? What information do you not need? So we can strike that out. We ignore the cash is 700. Net income is 1,800. So what is ending retained earnings? Well, we just run the normal math. 400 plus the net income minus the dividends. So it looks like our ending retained earnings is going to be 1,200. Ending retained earnings, 1,200. All right, number four. The entries made at the end of the period required to bring certain accounts to their proper balance. These are by definition called adjusting entries. This is really a chapter three topic when we're adjusting the accounts, but that's what it's called. We make entries at the end of the period. 
All right, what's the name of the certification CPA? Well, it stands for Certified Public Accountant. So that's the answer, Certified Public Accountant. You need to know that your professor will, uh, their feelings will be hurt if you don't know that CPA is Certified Public Accountant. Unearned revenue is what type of account? It is a liability. Now why? Unearned revenue, remember, under the accrual basis of accounting, we earn revenue uh, and we recognize revenue when we earn it. And so therefore, if somebody pays ahead of time, maybe we we're in a service business. In chapter one, two, and three, we're in a little service business, we're assuming. And what happens is they, we might do the work and they pay us right then. We might do the work and then we send them an invoice or a bill and they pay later, but they could prepay. We might be a consultant and they say, hey, this is February and we want you to consult in March, but we'll go ahead and make a deposit for half of the amount right now. So that way we can, you know, guarantee that you're going to be uh, next on the list or whatever. And so this is not revenue yet. This is unearned revenue. We owe them that money back or we owe them that service. So that's a liability. All right. What type of account? relates to another account and reduces that account. This is called a contra account. A good example would be something like um, depreciation. You have uh, the asset minus the depreciation. So that de um, depreciation account is a contra asset. Um, the one that you've seen so far in chapters one and two are dividends. So dividends is a contra equity. It takes, it's an equity, but it's the opposite of, and reduces. So a contra account is the opposite balance, and it reduces the other account. So the account, the relation to another account, reduces that account, is a contra account. Contra account. All right, we have another one here that is, we're trying to calculate um, retained earnings. So let me talk, copy my format from above. All right, so what we have here is if net income is 2,300, ending retained earnings is 2,900, dividends are 450, then what is our beginning retained earnings? Well, just work backwards. We start with the ending. We're going to add the dividends because normally we subtract, but we're going to subtract the net income because we're working backwards. So it looks like the answer is 1,050. If we take 1,050 plus 2,300, then that equals 3,350 minus the 450 equals 2,900. So the answer is beginning retained earnings is 1,050. Okay, we have another one that's related to this. So our beginning retained earnings, all these calculations, we're just going to do the same thing each time. All right, if net income is 4,000, beginning retained earnings is 3,000, ending retained earnings is 6,500, then what are dividends? Well, let's just work backwards, 6,500 minus the net income minus the beginning, we're left with dividends must be 500. Now this is uh, negative here. We don't have to show it as negative. It's, you know, it reduces. So the answer is 500. So what we do is 7,000 minus some number equals 6,500. And that's, that's your dividend amount. All right. Dividend is what type of account? Well, it's an equity. Remember, um, so equity is true, but also you could say, uh, it's a contra equity because it reduces the balance of equity. What are the accounting rules in the United States? Um, we call it GAAP or generally accepted accounting principles. And so sometimes we use the abbreviation GAAP, G-A-A-P, is generally accepted accounting principles. All right, we're going to list the big four accounting firms. Now, this is uh, probably not in your textbook, but your professor might give you this, um, and you might be expected to know this. You also want to know this because these are firms that might come to your campus and recruit, and you say, well, I've never heard of them. If you're going to be an accounting major or uh, business major, 
then you need to know some of the big employers. Whether you work there or not, you need to know these for sure. So here are the firms. Deloitte is one. Uh, EY is one. Now these are firms that had long names and, and uh, so EY stood for Ernst & Young. And so every once in a while you'll hear somebody use uh, Ernst & Young as the name, but they just typically go by shortened names now, EY. One is uh, PwC, and I think PwC, they do a small W. And the last one is KPMG. Now, in any order, I'm just um, giving you the four. So these are the big four accounting firms. They're worldwide in about 80 countries around the world or plus. And so these are the big four accounting firms. Now, let's do a final problem here in this video, and we'll switch over to journal entries on the next video. We're going to solve for net income or loss. And so here's the problem set up. We have beginning assets, liabilities, and equity. We have ending assets and liabilities. We're trying to have to solve for equity. And it says calculate net income or net loss for each of the following separate cases. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to set up beginning equity plus net income plus investments minus dividends gives us equity. Now, how is this different from our previous problem? Now, the previous problem had only retained earnings. Now, remember, we could issue uh, some kind of owner investment. So it's more than just retained earnings. It's all of our equity. So we're going to set up and we're going to solve for net income each time. So the first thing we need to do, so we need to say, what is our ending equity? Instead of giving our beginning and ending equity, we have to calculate that. Well, it's no problem. We know the accounting equation. Assets minus liabilities would give us equity, right? Because we know the accounting equation is assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. So these two numbers have to equal the 60,000. So we can reverse it using algebra and 60 minus the 20 equals 40. We can do the same thing for the ending. We can take 105 minus 36 gives us 69,000. So what we have is our equity is 40,000 for beginning. So I'm going to point to the 40,000. I'm going to make it absolute here. So I can just copy it across. And so this is 40,000 every time. Now, ending equity is going to be the same thing. Ending equity is going to be 69,000 in this case. I'm going to make it absolute with dollar signs. So I can just copy this across. So it's 69,000 all the way across. So all we're doing is we're changing the investments and the dividends and solving for net income. All right, so this is how you start with this problem. And so now we're going to calculate net income or net loss under the following cases. So item A, the owner made zero investments and dividends were zero. Well, this is the simplest problem we can do. What we're going to do is take, we're going to take the 60,000, 69,000 minus, um, I mean, plus the dividends because we're going to reverse it, minus the investments, minus the beginning equity. All right, so if we had beginning equity plus net income plus zero investments minus zero dividends, that equals 69000 All right, what if we have, so our net income is 29000 in item A. What if the owner made zero investments and the dividends were 15000 I'm just going to enter this as a positive number. So we can do the same math. I'm going to do it one more time and then I'm going to copy it across. So you can see we're going to work backwards because we're trying to find out what was net income. So 69,000. I'm going to add back the 15 because it was a subtraction. I'm going to subtract out the investment because that's a plus. I'm going to subtract out the 40,000. So what we have is it must be our beginning equity of 40 plus net income of 44. That's 88. Minus 15 gives us 69,000. All right, so I can just copy this across. This is why we do Excel. And so if this is zero, then our answer for net income is 29,000, but it's not. Well, let's say the owner in item C made investments of 55,000. So 55,000, you see the net income changes and the dividends were zero. Well, 
then there must have been a loss. So item C, we have a net loss of 26,000. Or you put 26,000 in parentheses to show that it's a negative number. All right, what if the owner made investments of 35,000 and dividends were 15,000? Well, our net income then is 9,000. 